always feel that sort of admitting to falling in love with Delhi is rather is rather like admitting some weird sexual kink or something. <laughs> <laughs> Being into sort of something something incredibly brutal and sadistic or something. It's the sort of it's the, it's the architectural equivalent of S and M, I think. <laughs> It was in my late teens that I discovered travel writing and travel writers. I started with the then current favourites like Bill Bryson and Pico Air, but soon began to wander further afield. I discovered train travel with Paul Theroux. I walked across a pre-conflict Lebanon with Colin Thabrud. I even found an early 20th century classic on Central Asian travel, Road to Oxiana by Robert Byron. And in this group of fascinating travellers is, of course, the popular William Dalrymple. And when I discovered that William lives a laid-back life in a farmhouse in South Delhi, I absolutely had to meet him. You know, your sense of the Middle East is what actually got, got my attention first. So I actually read uh, From the Holy Mountain. That's, uh, the, that's the one that none of the Daisies ever read. Yeah, yeah, so that's the one that I yeah, read first yeah. and it was quite it's interesting. Very unusual here. Yeah, yeah, it was quite interesting. And, and it, you, know, I, you know, obviously the first thing that strikes you as you read that book is this notion of going back and thinking, yes, Christianity is an Eastern religion, right? It, it, you know, I come from Kerala where, of course, Christianity is part of, part of life. So, uh, you kind of have a sense of Christianity. But still, as you, as you travel around, you come and I lived the rest of my life in Delhi. It's, it's a very sure. Western yep. idea, right, Christianity. So, that book was interesting for me. Tell me about, that, uh, about the trip and the various trips that you did in the Middle East. So, in Zanadi was the first. Mm -hmm. And that was a journey um, that started in the Middle East. That took me through Israel-Palestine to Cyprus, mm -hmm. then to Syria. Syria then completely peaceful, right. utterly gorgeous, yeah. totally seductive. No tourists going there because the regime was quite fierce, but the friendliest people. I hardly spent a night in a hotel. Everyone would open their doors and at first you thought they were going to kill you or rob you or something, <laughs> but they were just the most hospitable people. Yeah. And what's the one apps memory that sort of really stands out? Which place? The two places now renowned for violence then enormously hospitable. One was Syria, mm. the other was Pakistan. So tell me about Syria. I mean, you know, nobody kind of knows much about Syria. Syria's an incredible country, or was an incredible country. Um, it was, it's one of the last countries in the former Ottoman Empire, the Middle East, mm. which still retained what India has, which is that massive variety and diversity. Mm. Taking this deeply interwoven fabric of so different nations mm -hmm. that was there in the mm -hmm. 19th century mm -hmm. and polarizing out into separate colors, like taking a carpet apart. The Patriarch of Antioch, the first time outside my personal experience, I right. got a reference to that was in your book. Right. The Patriarch of Antioch. Right. And, and why it was relevant was there was a gentleman in, in Kerala who is the representative of the Patriarch of Antioch in, outside of Syria. In Trishur. Uh, he's actually now in Trivandrum. Trivandrum yeah. He's actually uh, uh, he's a family friend, so that's how I know about the Patriarch of Antioch and all this stuff. Exotic yeah. stuff that yeah. you know typically you don't know about. So you know the book had a lot of connection for me. So so how did that book happen? What what went so into it? I came from a very um, my parents were extremely devout Catholics, okay. um, unusually so. Um, and I was sent off to a monastic school. I'm not personally particularly... And Scotland is Catholic, right? No, Catholic, oh, it's no, no, it's, it's, it's emphatically not. It's the oh, opposite. It's, it's, it's strongly Protestant. Oh, okay. And so it's like being a Parsi. It's being part of a tiny minority. Right. And you become very aware of your identity mm. when you are a small minority. I, and in my parents' generation, it was even stronger. And there was a great deal of anti-Catholicism in the air. So mm. it, it cemented their identity as private. You know, they thought of themselves above all as Catholics. I, I was fascinated that the Middle East, which today we think of as the home of Islam, mm. Uh, was the original heartland of Christianity. For India, we've just not explored our neighbours. So no. Burma, we don't know anything about. Anything. Until recently, it wasn't an open road. Mm. You couldn't, now you can actually drive from, right. from the northeast down into Burma, which yeah. was not possible as recently as three years ago. Yeah. I visit all your neighbours very regularly. I've, I've been on family holidays in the last few years in Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, um, Laos, Cambodia. Uh, a lot in Pakistan, a lot in Afghanistan. What, do you forget, what one always forgets living in India, is when, because national boundaries have solidified the way they have, mm. um, you forget that in actual fact it's, it's, it's quicker to fly to Kabul than it is to fly to yeah, Bombay yeah. Um, from Delhi. And, yeah. and it's a very quick and easy flight. And it's an incredibly beautiful country. So anyone watching this, yeah. you know, go and take a weekend in, in, in Kabul. I mean, various things, you, you know, be safe, don't, don't yeah. go crazily outside town and, and, and go to the main centres of town, but it, it's, it, it's not dangerous. Mm. Um, and uh, Herat is like Agra without a single tourist. <laughs> 
Herat is literally, I mean, it's, it's, it's got the monuments which inspired Agra, mm. the greatest Timurid monuments, mm. are in Herat. Mm. Amazing madrasas, amazing mausoleums, fantastic tower work. Mm. No one goes there. And what you find when you go a little bit further afield, even to Southeast Asia, to, is you find all this Hindu culture, which, yeah, yeah, like, which was, yeah. everyone's forgotten here. Yeah. Yeah, where's the greatest image of the churning of the oceans? It's in Angkor Wat. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and you've got all these Sanskritic, Hindu kingdoms, which were found in Indonesia and in Java, yeah. in Cambodia, uh, which um, which are some of the greatest works of art. And so you're very much going home. You know, that's true. In fact, that's, in fact, that's yeah. an interesting point. I first time I landed in Jakarta and I took the cab and I was driving into town. And as I kept going, I kept seeing these yeah. Sanskrit words on the left and the right on top of buildings. Well, the national airline is Garuda. That's right. Yeah. Garuda <laughs> and you know, everything else. And, and yeah. you know, I. It was, it was so much coming home, yeah. uh, because you can, you know, you know what this is, it's everywhere in Just India. between Jakarta airport and Jakarta is one of the greatest 12th century groups of temples up there with Kajarao, right. with amazing erotic temples yeah. and all this yeah. stuff, yeah. Uh, sitting yeah. outside the airport. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no one here knows anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Indonesia is another country, yeah, yeah. Just, just completely Ignored. blank yeah. in, our, in our scheme of things, that's true. If I was too busy flying to Dubai, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> well, <that's right. laughs> Why? <laughs> As the afternoon sun started to give way to a cool winter evening, I started to think about William's question. Why don't many more of us go to all these wonderful places we have close to our country, the near abroad as the Russians would call it. In a recent conversation, Vikas Behel, the thinking director behind the movie Queen, pointed out something very interesting to me. There are so many stories to be told with the neighboring countries, but the story has to be the starting point. Maybe that is the issue. India's extraordinary heritage is strewn all over our neighbours, but we have never really celebrated it in great stories. And without such stories, none of us would probably be lured to these amazing lands. Tell me about childhood. So, I had a particularly untravelled childhood. Okay. Odd for someone that became a travel writer, but actually one of the reasons I think I became a travel writer was as a kid, I went nowhere. And the reason for that was my parents lived in a particularly beautiful part of Scotland. Which is? Uh, on the coast southeast of Edinburgh, uh, in the borders. Southeast? South of southeast, Edinburgh? Southeast, where the coast turns ah, down. Ah, okay. I lived in Dundee for a few months. So, so opposite, so the Bass years. Rock and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Though, yeah. All that cold, yeah. Uh, and so the only time we actually travelled as a family was we'd go to another part of Scotland, which was even colder and wetter. So right. I suppose I grew up with a taste for the bleak and the empty <laughs> and the distant. Well, my big ambition had be, been to be an archaeologist. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. And I had planned to go and dig in Iraq, which is what I really wanted to do. But then Saddam Hussein closed the British School of Archaeology, oh, accusing in, it of being in, a nest of spies in Baghdad. Mm. Mm. Um, and I, was, I had nine months, which I'd laid out for this, without anything to do. Everything right. was completely, my plans were completely wrecked. And a friend was coming to India. So okay, I, that's the so I came here. <laughs> so I jumped on the plane with no interest in this place, with no knowledge about it, and it was like that. So yeah. still, yeah. uh, that age, age 18, I, I decided I would write a book on Delhi. I came into city as when, just when I turned to my teens, and I came from Kerala, and I've always liked the city. Of course, it comes with a lot of kings, and I love the kings <laughs> as well. But so tell me about your perception of Delhi. And I know that you probably can't summarize it. Of course, I can. No, I mean for me, what I love about it is it's one of the most historic cities in the world. Sure. And in terms of just the sheer litter of monuments, it's the greatest. Istanbul, Rome, Cairo, second division compared to Delhi. Mm -hmm. You can't take a swing on the golf course here, you can't walk through the Lodi Gardens, you can't turn around a traffic uh, circle without meeting some medieval tomb from the Tukluks or the Lodis. Or the and what's happened is that this excess of monuments has left people just to not value them. Oh. In America, where there's no ruins, there's no history at all, one sort of 19th century building is sort of you know, manicured and over-preserved yeah. and given a museum and it has a television series. And here you've got this history thick on the ground and no one's doing anything about it. And the other, other piece that I found totally connected to in your book was the taxi guys. You know, and, and that was incredible, right? Because anybody who's lived in a South Delhi colony <laughs> no, in the eighties can, you know, immediately say, oh, I knew this guy. Or, that will die with Uber now. And yeah. So yeah, no, I mean the Delhi I wrote about in City of Jinns in many ways is no longer there. And yet everything I loved and wrote about in that book. The calligraphers, the Sufis, the kabuta in the old city, the amazing kebabs, all that sort of stuff. That that is all still um, there. Yeah. It's just like extra rings of the tree have, have grown up around it. 
My name's William Dalrymple. I'm a travel writer and a historian, uh, and I live in Delhi. And I just think this is one of the greatest and least properly explored and least loved countries in the world. You guys need to get out there, need to go to Madhya Pradesh, need to go down Karnataka, need to explore all the temples of Tamil Nadu, all these amazing hills. Get out there and embrace the holiday IQ philosophy. It's the most amazing country. Hi, I'm Rahul Mukherjee. Hi, I'm Pooja Shankar. Randeep Haskar. And we, we are, are Antarman. Hi, I'm Vikas Bair. I'm Amit Pastricha. And we, we are, are Holiday IQ Travelers. We're part of the Holiday IQ Travel Community. Proud to be a part of the Holiday IQ Travel Community. To join India's largest travel community, simply log on to holidayiq.com and add your travel review and you're there.